Hi, I'm Cheryl Collarini, and I'm the Career Relations Manager in the Center for Career Development. And my name is Julie Leist. I'm the Employer Services Specialist in the Career Center. And today, our presentation is on working the Kenya School of Management Expo and networking. So we just want to give you an idea about what we're talking about today. Uh, we just want to prepare you for any job fair, but specifically the Business Expo. What you should wear, what you should bring, uh, what do you say to an employer, what do you do, um, and how to follow up. Before the Expo, the most important thing is to research the companies. You want to be able to go up to the companies with some knowledge of the opportunities that they are offering whether it's full-time, part-time, or internships. In addition to that, you're going to want to make sure that you have a perfect resume. You can attend Resumania, or you can make an appointment at the Career Center to have your resume reviewed. So one thing that a lot of students stress about when they're preparing to go to a job fair or to the business expo is what to wear. Um, how should they look when they approach an employer and we definitely stress the importance of dressing professionally. So we're just going to go over some guidelines for both the women and men what you should wear. So first for the women, you can see in these photos that these girls all look very professional. Um, you want to make sure that you're wearing a business suit, whether it's a skirt suit or a pants suit. Uh, make sure it's a dark color and you want to use a simple style blouse, uh, white or a soft color, not anything distracting from your face, and make sure there's no ne low necklines. You also want to make sure you're wearing polished pumps or medium-sized heels in a color that matches your suit, and uh, you can wear hosiery to make it a little bit more professional. Make sure that your hair is styled professionally and not distracting from your face. You want to pull it back if you tend to tuck your hair behind your ear or if you're easily distracted by your hair falling in your face, make sure you're, you're pinning that back or even putting it back in a low bun. You definitely want to watch the perfume because that's also something that's very distracting for employers. So either no perfume or very, very light perfume, minimal jewelry, um, natural looking makeup, again, not to distract from what you're saying, and just watch the nail polish as well. You want to do clear nail polish or a light pink, nothing that's going to be distracting. And the guidelines for the men. Remember that employers make judgments and they form opinions of candidates within the first few minutes of seeing you. So for the men, you want to make sure that you have a conservative two-piece darker color or muted plaid business suit. It can't be a sports jacket and a pair of pants. You need a business suit. You're also going to want to be conservative and wear a nice white shirt a contrasting tie and make sure that your shoes are polished and that they match your suit and that you also wear dress socks that match the suit. Uh, you do not want to wear athletic socks when you're in a dress suit. Also make sure that your hair is trimmed and neatly groomed and that it's dry and that you don't have a lot of gel in it that makes it look like a shower look. And make sure the same with your facial hair. You want to be neatly groomed. Uh, if you're going to wear cologne, you're going to want to make sure you're very, very light on the cologne. You have to keep in mind that employers might be allergic to that. And lastly, be conservative. No jewelry, no earrings. If you do have any ear piercings, you're going to want to take it out for the job fair. So next we just want to talk about what to bring to the job fair. First and foremost, you want to make sure you have your updated resume on good quality paper. This is not the paper that you print out in the library, not photocopy paper. Go to the bookstore, go to you know Walmart and pick up a nice heavy duty quality paper because that'll just make your resume stand out. It'll show that you put some thought into um, speaking with these employers and it'll just be a lot better looking when you hand it over to them. Next, you want to bring a portfolio or a pad folio. You can see in the picture on the right, this is one of those um, black or dark colored leather bound uh, notebooks or just a, a portfolio that you can store your resume in, store a pen in there, maybe a, a pad of paper to take notes, and also bring a pen or pencil so that you can write down any information that the employer says to you, whether it's an application deadline or even their name and phone number, email address, so you just want to be prepared and definitely bring these things with you. So then you might be wondering who will be there and how am I going to find out about what employers are going to be, attend this fair. The business club will always 
put on their home page the list of the employers that will be attending the expo. You are going to want to make sure about a week before the fair to do your homework and research the companies. In addition to the close to 30 employers on campus, there are normally Scranton alumni that will come on campus representing these companies. So you're going to want to make sure that you're able to research and see what alumni are attending the expo. In addition to that, the Center for Career Development staff is usually on hand to answer any questions that you might have throughout the expo. So when you get to the expo, you definitely want to make sure you sign in. Um, you'll see some friendly faces waiting for you, so swipe your royal card and, and make sure you get a list of the employers or a booklet of the employers that are there. So previous to the job fair, you should have researched them a little bit, but this will just give you a little layout of who's here, um, what kind of majors they're looking for. You want to highlight the companies that you planned on talking to so that you can have a game plan when you walk into the room. And when you come up to an employer, you definitely want to get in line to talk to them and wait very patiently. Um, employers definitely notice if you roll your eyes or if you seem impatient, and that'll kind of send a message to them that you don't want to send. So definitely make sure you're waiting patiently and professionally and um, you know, use your time wisely. Make sure you're talking to those companies that you planned on talking to. But you, know, you just got to be patient about waiting. One of the most important things about preparing for the expo, I would say, is your elevator pitch. You're going to want to make sure that when you are going up to the employer, you, you want to have a firm handshake and appropriate eye contact. That's very important. In addition to that, you're going to want to develop a nice little 30 to 60 second elevator pitch or a, a, like a commercial. You're going to want to make sure that you say, hello, my name is, and that your year and your major, you're currently a junior, you're majoring in economics, and you're working part-time as a work-study student in the Career Center. In addition to that, you are going to want to make sure that you did your research on the company and then you're going to ask about the opportunities that pertain to you. So for instance, if you're a junior, you're going to want to ask about the summer internship opportunity that they have available. And then you're going to want to ask them if they want a copy of your resume or if there's an application process, a link that you're going to need to apply for that summer internship. At the end of your conversation, you're going to want to remember to ask for a business card and make sure you say thank you because once you get that business card you can write some notes about how your conversation went with them and then you're going to want to send them an email thanking them for their time and possibly following up on an internship opportunity. So many times companies plan on interviewing students that they meet at the expo on the day of the expo so definitely bring a pen or a pencil and a pad of paper to write down where your interview will be um, when it will be and who it will be with because oftentimes it's only you and the employer that will know this information coming out of that conversation so if you don't write it down there's not really a way to make sure that you uh, double check with anyone that that you're going to the right place at the right time so definitely make sure you're writing that down in addition to the expo what they're going to do every year uh, with the business club is a networking reception the networking reception went over very well this year and it's a nice time for you to be able to mingle and introduce yourself to all the employers that were at the expo, but in addition to them, there are faculty there, staff, administration, and alumni. So avoid the tendency to talk to your friends. You really want to be able to know who's there and look around the room and be able to mingle and introduce yourself to these other people because it might be your first summer internship. I know for a lot of students, this is the first time that they experience a networking event, so we just want to give you some tips on, on how to navigate that. So first of all, make sure you eat dinner before you go to the event. I know that a lot of times the you know appetizers or hors d'oeuvres are very delicious, but we don't want to be preoccupied with eating while we're there because the primary purpose of you being there is to network. So make sure you um, come in with a full stomach and you know you can eat a little bit, but don't be too preoccupied with it. Um, in addition to that, make sure you're focusing on having good conversations and uh, planning your night and knowing that you're going to be speaking with these alumni or employers that you spoke to earlier at the job fair. Um, and make sure that the networking is the first focus of your night. 
Um, networking is also all about shaking hands, so make sure you don't have your hands full. That's a that's a tough thing to remember when you're at a reception like this because oftentimes you'll have um, your drink in one hand and food in the other, but that doesn't leave any hands free for meeting people and, and networking with people, so make sure you're conscious of that. And you want to, in addition to that, make sure you're holding your cup or your plate in your left hand so that your right hand is free to greet people. Some other event tips are to never talk with food in your mouth or chew with your mouth open. Again, these are common sense tips that we're giving you, but when you're there and you're with your friends and you're possibly, you know, having a good time, you sometimes might have a tendency to forget, but these are very important because oftentimes some of the employers that might be conducting interviews, they might be watching you at this networking event to see how you act in a situation like this. So select easy foods to eat. Don't uh, go to the messy sauces and avoid sticky foods because we all know how easy it is to dip possibly a meatball in sauce and then you get a nice little red spot on your white shirt. You just don't want that. Always use a plate when eating. Do not pick at the food table. And if you are standing at the reception, which this networking reception, everyone was standing and there really weren't any tables, you should either have a drink or a plate, not both, because you always need to have one hand free just in case someone comes up to you and you wanted to shake their hand. So finally, we just want to talk about following up the job expo or the uh, networking reception. So make sure you're writing a thank you note. These days, it's perfectly acceptable to send an email, especially if you know it's the night of or the day after, and you just want to remind them who you are. Say thank you for speaking to me yesterday at the the business expo. I really enjoyed hearing more about your organization and the opportunities there. You know, and just remind them who you are. It'll give them a little um, face to a name and just kind of keep you in mind for later on when they're hiring their interns or interviewing a couple weeks later things like that. And finally, you want to evaluate how you did. It's kind of tough to do so while it's all happening, but after the expo and after the networking event, think about how did I do? Did I talk to all the employers that I planned on talking to? Did I network at the event? Should I have done something differently? And just plan ahead for the next experience that you have so that you know what to do differently. And lastly, we want you to remember that the business club members and the Center for Career Development put a lot of work into this to get 30 phenomenal companies on our campus under one roof at the same time. So keep in mind that you want to attend the expo. I hope you found these tips uh, very helpful. And remember that you do not get a second chance to make a first impression. Thank you. So this includes our presentation. Um, if you want to contact the Career Center, our contact information is at the bottom of the slide. You can reach us at 570-941-7640 or you can email us at careers at scranton.edu. Thank you.